Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Hi, I'm Terry Young. Um, I'm an artist. I enjoy painting in pastels and watercolors. I have recently started working in acrylics and um, someday hope to do oils. Um, I've enjoyed drawing and painting since I was a child. I was encouraged by my family to pursue those endeavors. I did not go to school for it, however. Um, I've just taken a lot of lessons and a lot of workshops and a lot of practice for like 30 years. <laughs> I took all the high school classes I could and when I graduated, the summer I graduated, a artist moved to town named Rainy Reed and I took pastel lessons from her for a couple of years. That was uh, fun. She had a studio in town here and was new to the something new in the area and I was very excited about taking lessons from her. So that's how I started. I started in pastels and I think the first painting I did was a portrait actually. And because um, I was interested in faces at the time. But um, then gradually moved on to other things. Um, after that it was just uh, I joined a local art group and painted with fellow artists uh, which is the White Birch Artist, and I have taking, taken various workshops, not a lot, but a few workshops and from various artists uh, over the years, and just there's just a lot of practice involved. I have a lot of rejects under the, in the reject pile, but um, just, you know, once in a while they turn out pretty good. <laughs> This is the photo I'm going to work with. It's just a, a reference, but I chose it because I like the feel of the warm fall colors in front of the cool, dark background. So I'm gonna start by blocking in my shapes a little bit with the light and the darks to get a feel for the uh, colors that I wanna use. I'm going to start the painting by, first of all, choosing a color scheme. I chose colors that I thought I would want to use in this painting, and I just um, blocked out the, blocked in the darks and the middle and the light tones to give me an idea of the range that I wanted to use. Now I chose this blue paper. It's kind of a purplish blue because it's a dark paper and there's a lot of dark in the photograph. The blue will help, it's a complement of orange, so it will help the oranges pop in the painting. The little orange tree or the little fall tree in the middle there is going to be my center of interest. I'm going to slide it over just a little bit I'm not going to copy the photograph per se exactly, but I just want to pull the light and dark elements out of it. I also am using some negative painting in this piece. Rather than <clears throat> painting the bushes, I have painted around some of the background foliage and just indicated the trees by painting around them. I'm pretty eclectic. I like to paint different things. But right now, I am kind of stuck on landscapes. I'm really into my pastel landscapes. I've had um, florals uh, in watercolors. I like to do figures. Um, I go with my camera and my paints and go out on location when I have time, which is not a lot of time. And I tend to have a lot of water in my landscapes. Every once in a while, I have to tell myself to uh, choose something else <laughs> go out and do a field or a clouds or something um, so landscapes have are my favorite thing I think to do uh, to paint and I pastels is my favorite but I think I'm a little more accomplished in the pastels so naturally that's kind of what I lean to I have been enjoying learning to do acrylics I've just started out small and done some little small uh, florals to kind of learn how the medium works. I also enjoy painting 
pets. I've, I have cats, so that's a really easy subject matter. And um, so cats and dogs and, and uh, those fun little relatives of ours that, that uh, love you for <laughs> no matter what. Um, they are just a joy and people really like to look at them. It's a challenge to capture the character of the animal. I work a lot from uh, photographs. So as I'm painting, um, I have a tendency to overwork things. And so I've really been focusing uh, the last few years on trying to think in terms of less is more. I have a tendency to keep at it until it goes into the reject pile. So if I can keep that in my mind, less is more, I will have a better painting in the end. I'm going to work the blues and the violets around the dominant center of interest, the little tree there in the middle, to make it pop and say center of interest. And you know, I will also make my lightest lights and my darkest darks in that area. I have or am going to work more greens in there to help balance the color scheme a little bit so it isn't quite so purple and orange. I'm the kind of artist, and I'm not a fast painter. I do a lot of starts and finish very slowly. <laughs> I have lots of paintings started. I just pick one and, and try and finish it up. If it's not going well, I put it away and bring it out at another time. And if it looks like it's workable, I keep working on it. If not, then I just don't. I just put it away and don't, don't work on it anymore. I mean. I have not thrown up many paintings away. That's not to say that I've kept them all as frameable art. I put them in my box of rejects and refer to it often about what I liked about something, what I didn't like about something, and I can pull, pull it out and refresh my memory about what I did or didn't like about that particular piece. And um, then it helps me with another one if, if needed. Now I'm going to suggest some foliage in, in some of these trees and get the branches and, and leaves suggested. Perfect. I will start with a medium value and make the short shapes that way. The left, the foliage up on the left here, I'm just going to suggest. So it, I'm, I like to kind of scribble my marks in, kind of calligraphy. So I scribble a lot. It's actually called scumbling in pastel work. So I'll scumble just the color in, and I will go in with some darks into that to suggest the spaces between the branches and around the tree trunks. And then I'll also go into that with the lighter colors and the darker colors of the of the greenery and the orange. The water is a reflection of the trees, of course, and I don't want to make the water really detailed. So I am going to just suggest the color. I'm not going to try and draw branches or tree trunks. I'm going to keep it loose. Uh, the water is moving, could be moving a little bit. It isn't moving in my reference material so much, but um, I'm an artist, I can change it. So I'm going to have a little bit of movement in the water. And so I'm just going to lay the basic color in first and get that in. And then I will go in on top of it and do my little scumble marks and look at it for a minute and decide where I actually want the plane to show the planes of the, the reflections. Everything needs to lead to that center of interest. So all my detail will be pretty much in that area. When you're doing water, you need to show the plane of the water. 
even if it's just a little dash of smudge in there and it's got to be horizontal. You can paint an exact duplicate of your foliage in the water if you want to and just smudge it, but you sort of need a game plan before you start if you want your water moving or not moving. And so with this painting, um, I haven't quite decided that at this point yet, um, but it'll come to me as I'm going. I'm This foreground bank of grass, I am not going to use that shape, but I am going to suggest it the same way I did the trees. I will use my medium values in there first, suggest the water line with some light and dark lines, and then put the little light color on the top. Now I don't want it to be a center of interest, so I am not going to put a lot of light values in there. I'm just going to suggest a little bit of light hitting the tops of the grass. The background foliage is going to be cooler because it's in the background. So that will be suggested with positive and negative painting again, as well as the uh, being conscious of the medium values. I'm not the planner sometimes. Ideally, doing a pencil sketch or a thumbnail sketch, some kind of value plan uh, is the perfect way to start a painting, but that's not usually what I do. <laughs> so I struggle a little bit sometimes with, with composition in the end, but um, I think this one is coming along and it'll be interesting to see where it leads and if it's a keeper at the end. <laughs> If you enjoyed this segment of Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground, consider making a contribution at lptv.org. If you have segment ideas pertaining to North Central Minnesota, contact us at legacy at lptv.org. Common Ground is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund by the vote of the people on November 4th, 2008.